airline flights get delayed or even cancelled due to extreme weather conditions, plans can get thrown into disarray, particularly for business passengers looking to attend meetings or speak at conferences, time is precious. Weather can significantly affect aircraft operations as low cloud and rain may impede visibility at or around an airport. The impact of weather on flights at this time of the rainy season is our focus. Plus, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority gives air peace a clean bill on airworthiness. A warm welcome to Aviation This Week. I am BC Adibayo. Weather can significantly affect aircraft operations. Low cloud, fog and rain may impede visibility at or around an airport, while thunderstorms and lightning can cause serious disruption to flight schedules. Thunderstorms and the rapidly rising or falling air currents which usually accompany them can make air travel uncomfortable for passengers and difficult for pilots in control of aircraft. Here in Nigeria, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority usually advises pilots and airline operators to exercise caution during flight operations in hazardous weather conditions as the rainy season begins. For each uh, season that we get, we know what, um, what the effects of it are to our jobs or how it relates to our jobs. Uh, say, for example, for our matan season, we know we usually struggle with visibility because of the dust ease. It comes in a lot and we have to struggle with visibility. Visibility gets poor. So then we, uh, we, have, uh, we have to watch the trend to see if it gets better for our operations. And then also the airline as well to see if their schedule would run as it should or as planned. And if it doesn't, then you adjust your timing to that effect. So also for rainy season, we have times when we know, okay, uh, in the afternoon because of temperature the increase or rise, we know activities in the skies get more during these times and then you know what cautions to take when you have these rainy clouds or cumulonimbus clouds as we call it around your roots and uh, all of that. While bad weather has the ability to cause havoc, accurate weather reports help pilots to keep both craft and passengers safe. If you're ignorant of what is around you, then it becomes dangerous. So, say there's a rain cloud or a CB around you and you do not know what that is all about and you choose to fly through it, then it becomes a dangerous situation. But the CB on its own, hmm, it's just one of nature's uh, phenomena, so not really dangerous. But then, when it's just like respect, you have to respect nature, respect your environment, respect what machine you're flying, and respect yourself as a person, know your limits. Weather causes a major incident or accident as to an airline or an aircraft. It definitely would affect the airline at the end of the day. The weather situation at this time is also a factor in delays and diversions as sudden weather changes when the flight is already airborne could occur. But passengers say they are often not told an indictment on customer care. If it's as a result of weather, we won't have any choice. But the truth is nobody has said anything about why it was moved or not moved. Poor customer service. And even if you want to move a flight, we have emails. There's a way you can even email us a day before. You don't just do things like that. It shows that this is poor customer service. No, on to weather, there's no problem about that one, you know. Whatever it is, they should let us know. We will not be waiting until last minute when our hopes are there. Some of us are coming from a very far place and then, um, you know, we do many things to make sure that we get to where we want to go. Weather, particularly wind speed and direction, is generally the major factor to determine which runways to use at an airport, in which direction aircraft will take off and land, and which flight paths are used. Here are some tips about weather. A plane cannot land or take off if the visibility or wind is outside legal limits. A plane cannot make an approach to land if the weather is outside its operating limits. A plane cannot fly within 25 nautical miles of a thunderstorm. On the whole, weather is a natural phenomenon. 
It is the responsibility of the airlines to adjust to its whims. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, the industry regulator, usually issues advisory circulars to pilots and airline operators to be wary of weather changes and their adverse effects on flight operations. The Director General of the agency, Mukhtar Usman, in this interview begins with an analysis of the two major seasons in Nigeria. The type of weather that influences uh, West Africa generally. We have two types of winds depending on which time of the year. Uh, during the dry season, we have the winds coming from the Sahara, bringing dust uh, with attendant uh, reduced uh, visibility. Uh, during the wet season, we have uh, winds coming from the southwest, mainly from the sea. Uh, bringing in some uh, precipitation, which is uh, rain. Uh, along with the rain, you have possibilities of uh, thunderstorms. While the farmers are very happy, the rainy season is here. The pilots are always being cautioned that this, uh, there are a lot of uh, hazards associated with the rainy season, which is the thunderstorms. Uh, reduced visibility in heavy rain, uh, also uh, flooding of the runway, reduced braking action for aircraft that is landing, also increased landing distance as a result of uh, less friction arising from water on the runway. Uh, again, there's possibility of what we call uh, skidding. There are also changes in uh, wind that can happen. And if it happens so suddenly, the wind speed and no direction, you can have what you call uh, wind shear. And if it happens very close to the ground, it's very dangerous. That's why we call on uh, pilots and the operators to always respect. First of all, obtain accurate weather from official sources, analyze the weather, and utilize the weather to ensure that they don't get into a situation uh, of either uh, incident or accident happening. Yeah, so that's why we uh, always remind pilots and operators to be cautious. So you are trained theoretically on ground, which we call a ground school during the ground school training. And uh, also when you go to flight, weather uh, situation, various weather situations are simulated to see that you are able to cope when you find yourself in that condition. But as I said, the, what we stress is avoidance. Uh, there's a lot of improvement in the area of uh, technology. So we have both uh, onboard uh, indicators and before pilots uh, even depart, from their uh, point of departure to their destination, the pilots are expected to get the departure point weather, their route weather, and uh, also the destination weather. In addition to getting an alternate uh, weather where they are not able to land at the destination. That's how important uh, the weather is. And uh, we have official source here in Nigeria, the Nigeria Meteorological Agency. They have accurate uh, weather forecasts. They use the uh, ground-based weather radar in some areas and also a low-level wind shear lighting system to alert pilots. Flash begins with the Flight Crew Association of Nigeria saying that it is worried about the several contradictory information in circulation on social media and other platforms on the recent Airpeace aircraft event. According to the body of professionals, 
Aviation accidents are usually well investigated and not based on media reports. The body responsible for investigating and reporting the cause of any accident or incident in Nigeria is the Accident Investigation Bureau. The body believes that the public can monitor the AIB website for a more concise and plausible information on these and other incidents. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority has declared the fleet of domestic carrier airpiece as airworthy. A statement by Sam Adurobui, the general manager of public relations, noted that the agency made the decision after it completed a thorough technical audit of the airline and its fleet of aircraft with a view to ensuring that the airline is in compliance with extant Nigerian Civil Aviation regulations. It also noted that the Accident Investigation Bureau is currently carrying out an in-depth investigation into the incident to determine the immediate and remote causes of this particular incident as required by international standards stipulated in International Civil Aviation Organization Annex 13. This statement comes on the heels of the recent incident involving an airpiece aircraft which landed on the Muritala Mohamed International Airport and lost a tire. Meanwhile, the former managing director of the Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, Roland Iai, has asked the NCAA not to be reactionary, but rather proactive in its decisions, especially with unshadowed operators. Mr. Iai believes that the operation of unshadowed operators is already enshrined in their AOC requirements. We had a helicopter land on the Ore uh, uh, Benin Expressway. It was a medical evacuation. It, it was a helicopter. A helicopter can land pretty much anywhere. The operator is a licensed operator by the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. The next morning, they received a letter from the CAA challenging why they flew and almost created all manner of emergencies and accidents. Now, this is part of a knee-jerk reaction we see on a daily basis. I can tell you this today. As a result of that incident, the CAA wrote a letter to non-scheduled operators and requested that before you, can com before, you, before you can commence a charter flight, which is a go show, you must communicate to the CAA. First of all, they want to inspect the aircraft, ensure the license of a, of a, of a crew are current. They want to know the passengers on board and then you tell them where you're going to. Besides that, they want to know where you're taking off from. We need to understand the import of our actions. Part of the policy inconsistencies is born out of the fact that, unfortunately, we have individuals holding very critical positions in government with very little understanding of what it means to be in that position. A small Pakistani military plane crashed into a residential area near Rabi Plaza, Rawapindi, before dawn on Tuesday, killing at least 19 people, including two pilots and three crew members. The injured were taken to the Holy Family Hospital in the city. At least four to five houses were engulfed by fire after the plane crash. In a statement, the military said five soldiers were among those killed in the plane crash. Rescue officials said the death toll could rise further since there are injured people in critical condition. Finally, thousands of protesters converged on the Chinese ruled city's airport as Singapore advised its travelers to avoid protest areas in the territory. Hong Kong Airport Authority said operations at one of Asia's biggest civil aviation hubs would not be affected, but advised passengers to arrive early given the risk of disruption. At the airport, protesters dressed in black and seated on the ground gradually filled the entire arrival hall. They held up signs calling on the government to withdraw the extradition bill completely. While chants of free Hong Kong reverberated around the Cavernous Glass and Steel Hall. The former British colony will return to China in 1997 is embroiled in its worst politics. Let's take a look at how some animals are kept at the JFK Airport, New York, USA, before they are lifted to their destination.
Fifteen horses chew away at Timothy Hay in readiness for their departure flight at the ARC at the John F. Kennedy International Airport. The 65 million state-of-the-art ARC opened in 2017, providing animal care for all animals that travel through this airport. The ARC at JFK opened on January 2, 2017, so about two and a half years ago. Uh, it is a full-service animal health and uh, health reception and quarantine center for all animals that travel through JFK Airport. Every detail was thought out to accommodate the safety and comfort of the animals, from the type of paint on the walls to the speckling on the floors to the size of the stalls, kennels and types of food. The Ark is located right off the runway so animals can step off the plane and right into the facilities. It filled a hole that the previous animal center vet port left, which critics say was much farther away, smaller, unsanitary and mismanaged. Since April of 2018, a lawsuit filed against the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, which operates JFK Airport and leases to the ARC, has been put on hold. The suit said that the Port Authority was supposed to give the ARC exclusive rights for animals coming into the JFK, but most of the 4,000 or so horses and hundreds of birds arriving at JFK from 2017 through 2018 were taken to another facility in Newburgh, about a two and a half hour drive from JFK. Now all horses flying into JFK must be processed through the ARC. We're getting maybe 50 to 60 horses are walking through the ark, uh, not necessarily being quarantined here. Uh, pets, probably, uh, you know, pets and small animals, I would say a similar, a similar number. We do get uh, funds coming in from the animals that we are shipping and, uh, or, and the horses. And now that we're doing, now that all, you know, all horses are being coordinated through the ark, there has been additional revenues associated with that. Um, but of course, running a facility like this is, is, not, is not inexpensive, so we're uh, doing the best we can. Parts of the facility still sits empty. Paradise Full Paws, a 20,000 square foot dog and cat resort, hasn't opened because the ARC doesn't have enough money to finish building it. ARC's authorities say traveling with animals is not an easy process and that pet and horse owners should or can take advantage of their services. Knowing that there is a facility here, particularly in the New York area, that's available as a, um, an assistance for everybody um, is really important because just bringing your animal, checking them in as excess baggage at the plane or, or trying to do it yourself, there's uh, all sorts of opportunities for problems and heartache and uh, we just as soon avoid all of that. <laughs> The 178,000 square foot animal haven has taken care of horses, cats, dogs, turtles, baby goats and rabbits, among other animals. Maintenance, repair and overhaul is often called by the acronym MRO. This phrase is used to describe aircraft maintenance activity. Aircraft MRO is an increasingly vital part of the aerospace industry, helping to prolong an aircraft's lifespan. C-Check is um, a, a schedule maintenance, a heavy schedule maintenance, because um, that involves so many things. Uh, in-depth inspections, um, as you can see, the aircraft, we, you bring out the whole seat, cabin, open up area for detailed inspections. We have ADs that we accomplish. ADs are airworthy directives, uh, that are issues that we accomplish on the aircraft. So it's a very ex extensive maintenance that we carry out uh, from, uh, during the seat check. The repair station industry goes beyond providing services for just this one segment of the aircraft maintenance. It's huge, covering all segments of aircraft maintenance. 
The aircraft maintenance industry encompasses small repair stations that typically perform specialized services such as welding, platen, or non-destructive testing services. Many of these services are complex processes that require specialized equipment, experience and authorizations, systems and carburetors. It depends on what task we have or what um, inspections we have to perform on this check. We, for the cabin where passengers sit, we, we bring out the seats because we have inspection on the floorboard on top of the center tank. We have to remove the board under where the uh, passenger sits and inspect all that area. We have there are ADs on the side walls, which we also uh, inspect the windows. We inspect for crack, and there are outside inspections too. The flap, if you check the flap, you can see that some of the parts are out the flap, and the uh, uh, empty detail parts. You can see also see that we have. Um, uh, we are already opening the panels for inspections. We have so many other inspections. And then after that, we do, uh, we have the engines normally will come down. We we'll drop the engines to uh, carry out inspection on the beam, the bolts that hold the engine. We carry out all those inspections. For airline operations, the savings on maintenance offshore is critical to the lifespan of the business. First of all, we have what we call a work package. Minimum five, six hundred, seven hundred. Then it now depends on your rotables and other item consumables may go up to one million or more. So, yeah, sure, everything is in dollar. They don't discuss Naira there outside. So it's all dollar component. So that's what we put in the market. And you know dollar now in Nigeria is 360. That's the benchmark. We don't say we get it from CBN or to, for maintenance, no. First of all, we have to look at improved capability and capacity. Because most of them have learned a lesson from putting the aircraft into the offshore. And you know it costs a lot of dollars. And these dollars are not something you go buy. And we sell our ticket in Naira. So when you weigh the cost on the side and the cost on the maintenance, is outweighed the normal money we are collecting. We want to keep Nigeria flying. We are not charging the reprice. What we are charging when you convert 30000 to Nigerian uh, local currency is less than $100. Before now, Every airline goes out to the Europe or to the Americas to do this work. So it saves uh, the airlines from spending foreign currency to do it outside the country. Apart from that, you know the cost of flying airplane empty six, seven hours to an overseas facility to go and, and do this. You save that cost as well. Any aircraft out of the sky for a short amount of time costs large amounts of money to an airline's operations. And so a facility in the country will be the key to limited downtime. A marrow business is in such a way that you must have slots to where you put the aircraft for the maintenance facility. So if you do not have slots, then you have to wait. And uh, if let's say Max here comes here and says, uh, I will give him slot immediately, and he's taking it to Turkish, and Turkish is giving him slot maybe in two months, that means he's going to spend two months on ground. We're just trying to build the confidence to make sure that our, our customers are very comfortable with us and, uh, and they, they see the kind of services that we provide. With the increase in demand for flying, airlines are needing to have larger fleets and ensure the aircraft are always in top condition, ready at the airline's beck and call to travel thousands of miles promptly. This is where we call it today on the program. See you next week, God's willing. I am BC at Debayo.